All right, fellow YouTubers and Patreons alike. We are back on the VR. We took the head off, just like we showed you in the last previous video. Now we're ready to actually disassemble uh, the actual bottom half, or AKA the short block, um, which is the bottom half of the engine. So we're gonna take the pan off, but just by inspecting the pan alone, you can see right here, this has already had a crack. So there's already been treated and trying to have been repaired already. So I'm very curious what we're gonna find when we pull the pan off and pull the oil pump cover or the sump cover and see what we see under under this. Ooh, so I'm excited. So we're gonna get an Allen wrench and a saw, a ratchet, and get this all unbolted and show you what's gonna happen next. Honestly. <laughs> Danny Ratchet and we're gonna break this pen loose use my extension make it a little bit easier make it like 10 feet long but it's okay Now, as I'm removing the bolts, I'm only breaking them loose. I'm not actually um, taking them off completely. I do this just because when I take them all off, and then I go back to them, it's just a much faster process. Now, you'll see underneath, I put a rag, and then I put my oil pickup, or my oil uh, sump, or my oil catch can, whatever you guys want to call it. Um, I do that because once you flip the engine upside down, it's going to drain a lot of oil and coolant. And you want to capture it as much as you can as it drains and not make a mess on your floor. Now this build, we're kind of going to do a combination of inside and outside due to my space limitations. So I'm actually kind of excited. My wife actually did a good job making space for me. Uh, so when we take everything apart, we can sort it on a table, AKA my wire rack that we have in our garage. Um, unfortunately, this is the only way I've been able to do, to make the, to do this, so. A lot of times these sockets, I mean not these sockets, but these bolts don't want to come out. So be careful because they easily strip. So definitely take your time on removing these. Alright, so I'm going to show you what the pan looks like once I take it all apart. So I'll see you guys in just a minute. So we got the oil pan unbolted. So let's see what we get to get inside. <laughs> that came off a little too easy. Ooh. Ooh. Whoa. -ho. That is a lot of glitter in there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's bad. Let's see what else we got here. Okay, so you see here, that's chunk of metal, that's metal, that's all metal right there. 
thinly sliced pieces of metal. I'm not liking that right now. <laughs> so, but where did it come from? That's what matters. There's chunks of it in here too, inside the oil pickup. So, look at that. Wow. No bueno. Very, very thinly sliced. So next we're going to take the oil pump out. So we got one, two, three, four bolts that I see right now that hold this pump together as one piece. So let's get those off and let's, let's dig in deeper. Not good. So I got some better lighting. Hopefully this makes a big difference for us. So I'm going to show you guys something very important. Um, the oil pump isn't chain driven like on a 1.8T where the chain is drive driven by a little gear. I mean the pump is driven by a gear. It's actually driven by a shaft right here. Uh, you'll see this uh, pipe right here. This is actually a shaft that um, moves as the engine turns and that is what the oil pump pump runs off of right here and you'll see this uh, it has the little shaft goes in and out and makes the pump actually work pretty simple and very very cool um, so the pump is held by two bolts here uh, the shaft uh, comes right out so remember the orientation very very important the shaft only goes in one way so you guys got to remember that so be very careful uh, the shaft also has these little rings right here so for seals so we got to keep that in mind that when we do when we start rebuilding this engine that these uh, we replace all of these little bushings and stuff so that we get maximum performance out of the uh, your oil system because this is it this is what pretty much uh, pumps oil through your car or through your engine and keeps it running healthy so more than likely this has already done its duty and failed um, so we're probably going to replace this pump we're not going to reuse it uh, rebuild and get, get, get a good pump in here uh, when we do the rebuild so the next step here is to pull out all the pistons uh, first and then the main caps and then we'll be able to see what actually happened to this engine I'm hoping after I do all that, uh, I'll be able to unseize this because this isn't coming off. Uh, this is giving us a problem right now. So uh, this we might have to heat the crud out of this to be able to knock it off. So that was going to be next. So hopefully we'll get to that in just a minute. So OEM rods are held by a 12 millimeter bolt and faith. <laughs> So just remember that all on the VR6, the OEM rods are held by 12 millimeter bolts. So some of these actually I might not be able to get off um, due to the fact that the crank won't turn. So I'll do the best I can to get what I can off. Hopefully every time we break loose something loosens it up for me. So I'm probably going to break loose all the main caps as well, uh, which looks like it uses a triple square. Let's see which triple square. Oh yeah, look at that. It uses a uh, 10 triple square. So let's see if we uh, break loose the main caps here and 
give us a little bit of play. Now my thing is I don't want to move the main caps too much because I want to see the actual damage that has been done to this engine. Now, this is the front of the engine, this is the back, so cylinder one, two, two, three, four, five, and six. Um, they have numbers on these caps, but they don't have numbers for a very significant reason, so because they're not different from each other, so I don't know if that matters at all. So as we work, we'll see what, what changes. Okay, so one other hurdle. The other bolt here won't come off due to the front, uh, the front main seal or the front main cover being there. So I'm going to take all these off as much as I can and see if it will allow me to rotate the motor. If it does, and we'll take everything out that we can and inspect everything that we take out one at a time as we work and I'm already seeing a pile of debris there in this specific area so I'm wondering if this is the problem area could be coincidence but who knows so as I look through this and inspected the main caps are numbered from front to back at cap one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So we have seven main caps, and this is the back of the engine. So the the numbers are facing towards the front, or I guess the um, if it's in the engine bay, this is the front, this is the side. But again, for the orientation wise, uh, they're numbered like this. So this is the back where the exhaust would go. Uh, this is where the intake side would be so they are numbered like this from left to right uh, make sure you remember that orientation it's very very important when these caps go back on because they're not universal they only go one way so that is very very important okay so i pulled out rod the rod cap from let's see cylinder one two three four and the bearings are pretty nice. They're in really good condition for this one. So, definitely uh, curious on what actually, like, what seized on this motor. Because these rod bearings, I mean, the rod bearings are looking good. Who knows what the other stuff looks like. So, I'm going to try to pull out piston, let's see here, again that's a nice rod bearing, the wear isn't very odd, now I do see some wear on the crank, mm, but I don't see any glow where it would show any signs of like failing rod bearings again there is metal flakes in here though so we'll keep on going and going and going as we disassemble and keep keeping track of what we're taking apart but man there's like no space to push these pistons out Ooh, there it is. There's a rod bearing failure right there. See how that's spread out? See that metal? That's a that's a rod failure right there. And that came out of cylinder one, two, 
one, two, three. So cylinder three it immediately has a rod failure. So there we go. So not not crank, but rod is failing. Okay. So we got to keep uh, keep going. So we know now cylinder number three is one one bad mamma jamma. So I gotta get a really long shtick and push that out. <clears throat> so we can get this guy out. So I'm on cylinder number five, and that is the one that's different from all the other ones because of its color, and it's burnt. That's what that color is right there, if you guys can see that. It's black, and because it literally went through the entire rod bearing and went to the actual rod cap and destroyed it. As you can see, there's already damage on the outside of the cap. Uh, due to the uh, actual rod um, bearing melting, as you can see that I'm pulling literally rod pieces of rod bearing off of it. Um, so yeah, there's there's the official um, diagnosis. There is a fail rod bearing or a rod uh, due to more than likely oil starvation, um, as per the owner explaining that the car ran out of oil because it had a cracked pan. So we're going to keep digging further and see if we see any more, but one out of six is already officially bad. So we know we're going to need new rods for this motor. We'll see what else we're going to need. If, if the pistons are good, I mean, we can re uh, have the pistons re um, cleaned up and going and we're good. Uh, so far, the two pistons that came out of here are working well. They slid right out, so we know that it's actually working pretty good. But we don't know the, like I said, the rest of the damage uh, to the engine until we go much, much deeper into it. So we have two rods that went bad. Piston number two. Whoa! Spun the rod all the way over. You see the seam right there. So that's cocka duty, and it ruined the rod cap right there. All that damage, all that damage right there. So uh, we're gonna. Probably gonna have the crank polished, uh, miked to see how much play we or how much damage is actually done to this crank, um, and hopefully it's reusable. Because if not, we got to go to a different route on this motor. Um, but it's exciting because uh, it's all new territory for me for a seized motor. Well, actually, it wasn't seized. Spun rods, two rods spun due to oil starvation which is very hard to do and not hard to do depending on how careful you are on your motor when something like this happens when you crack a pan you know so that's cylinder number two that we're pulling stuff out of so this bolt here is pretty much seized up, so we're going to try to literally just melt it off or break it off somehow. Because um, if I can't remove this bolt, we can't take apart the entire engine. This is pretty much where we're left at, so bear with me. We're working on it. Oh, there we go. So it really sucks because this is the last pretty much part of the uh, full disassembly. We are officially down because uh, now the engine cranks actually pretty, not freely, but pretty easy. Um, much easier than before since all the pistons are now out. Um, kind of 
Come on. Um, but we now know rod number two and rod number five, or is it six? Yeah, five. Two and five pretty much have two uh, have our spun. So we know now that that's part of the biggest issue here uh, on this block, which is good because it's actually now spinning. So we actually got some, at least some decent information. Uh, so it might not be that expensive to rebuild. Uh, again, that's just assuming until we actually dig deeper and uh, researching the cost to doing this rebuild. So we got it out. Uh, I had to use my, I found a 2x4, crammed it in between cylinder 3 and 4, and I literally hit it down with a hammer until it stuck in there and got more surface area for that pendulum to grab on that wood, and then I broke it loose with the uh, impact gun, and then I got my breaker bar and came right off. So, yay! <laughs> We're even closer to victory now. So, you can see where 2x4 is grabbing right there. Worked out great. So now we're going to take off the front um, seal here. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 10 millimeter bolts. And that should take this whole front seal off. And then the whole crank can come out. Ah, thank Jeebus. This is almost done. Yay. All right, we'll get back to you in just a moment. So, we took the crank out, and now we're going to go and inspect a little further. Sorry about the light. So you guys can see, the one that has the most, the largest failure here out of all of them was cylinder number five, or four. Hold on. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. Cylinder number five was the worst. Uh, where the literally there was no rod bearing it was gone and disintegrated uh, as you can see it's right here uh, most of the rod bearings right there it's it's insane how much damage uh, letting the car run out of oil can do to a, a car so there you go so diagnosis engine oil starvation and spun a rod and he didn't spin one rod, we spun two rods. He spun uh, number two and number five. So we know now that's the main failure on here. Now, the next issue is how much damage did he do to the crank? Uh, is the crank salvageable? Uh, or are we going to oversize bearings? Or we're going to have to go buy a new crank? We're gonna, these are things that are very, very important when we get into... Um, rebuilding because we have to figure out how much has been used and how much uh, can we use to be within factory specifications. So uh, that is for professionals and I'm going to have um, Paradise Motorsports do that for us and we're going to have them plasti gauge the, the crank for us to make sure if we're out around or if we're um, within at least still tolerance of using factory size uh, bearings or going oversize which means we're going to have to polish the entire crank until we get it within spec and then you know put everything in there um, going oversize isn't a bad thing remember that it's just we just have to get the right size bearing so we don't cause any future damage to this engine uh, the next thing is we are going to have to replace the oil pump itself uh, more than likely because all that metal material probably went through it and started causing more problems with the engine down the road. So, yep, we found the conclusion and I'm excited for this actually because this is new stuff and a new uh, pretty much era of work here at Pinchao's Garage and I'm, I'm excited for you guys to be uh, come along with me. Again, if you guys love what we do, please become a Patreon. The more supporters we have, uh, Patreon support we have, the more DIYs we can create and the faster this build can uh, be done. Uh, so we're already down to a bare engine. There's nothing left here. So that is a positive note. Uh, so uh, we are getting ready to take this to the machine shop and we're going to talk to Scott, the owner, and Joe, the machinist. 
and we're going to see what he recommends for us to do. Uh, of course, if they're going to allow us to film the whole process, I hope so. We'll have a, an exclusive field trip at uh, Paradise Motorsports uh, doing all the machine work on a VR6 engine. All right, thanks again, everyone. And again, if you want to become a Patreon, click the link down below. Also, we have our online store at pinchalsgarage.com. This all helps out for more content for this channel and obviously more DIYs for you guys. Have a wonderful night and be safe out there. Peace out and have a wonderful day. And as always, we're going to break, fix, and repeat. Peace out, everyone.